Thanks again for stopping by everybody. This is Bacchus Bruce and uh, doing something a little bit different today. We're doing uh, some sugar uh, level reading here in our grapes uh, from the uh, local vineyard here in Hayward, California. This is the uh, Holy Sepulcher Cemetery Vineyard of all places, uh, which grows uh, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Primitivo. Uh, if you follow the Instagram feed that I uh, put out there, you'll see some of the pictures I took today. And um, it's getting to be harvest time, and uh, we all know that our friends who work in the wine business are working very hard right now. Uh, if you're out in the vineyards, you're picking at all hours of the morning and the uh, evening, uh, oftentimes. If you're a winemaker, you're uh, starting to ferment your, uh, your, your grape juice, and, uh, and that's just an uh, absolute difference difficult situation because you're up all hours monitoring things. It's it's a hard time of year if you're in the business. So uh, we're doing kind of a little uh, uh, kind of a sample of, of what that life is like. So uh, if you are a winemaker, one of the most difficult choices that you have to make uh, in the course of the growing season is when to pick your grapes. So a couple things you can do uh, to, uh, to help you make that decision. One, you can go through the vineyards uh, walking it and tasting. Uh, and determining uh, from the palate uh, where your grapes are. So you're, you're uh, tasting the, uh, the acidity and the juice, you're uh, seeing the uh, tenderness of the skins, you're also visually inspecting the seeds. Uh, when you get to a dark, kind of a dark brown color, you know that you're, you're just about there. You can also use what's called a refractometer, which I have one in front of me here. Uh, refractometer measures the sugar level in fruit juice. So it's uh, obviously used in grapes. It can certainly be used in other uh, fruits as well. Uh, this is called the MA884 from a company called Milwaukee. Uh, got it a couple years ago on Amazon for, I want to say $125 or so. Uh, just like any other devices, you want to make sure it's calibrated properly, so follow your directions, make sure that you're getting accurate reads. Um, refractometers require that you have what's called uh, DI water, uh, de uh, deionized water. Uh, you, you can't really use regular water on this to, uh, to measure and clean your, your prism. Uh, that uh, regular water tends to have treatments on it, can leave uh, chemical films, which uh, can throw off your actual numbers. So uh, after you've gone through and you've uh, calibrated your your device, then you um, are ready to uh, go ahead and, and, and take some measurements. So let's go ahead uh, and uh, see what we have here. So I've went ahead and um, uh, squished all the juice out of uh, some berries I took uh, this morning. So again, as you're uh, going through uh, trying to determine uh, your sugar levels, uh, usually you're going to be picking whole clusters and your vineyard workers are going to be going through rows in your block and they're going to be clipping high, clipping low, clipping inside, clipping outside the canopy, both sides of the vine to try to get an accurate representation of, uh, of where your grapes are in their development. Uh, you can also do it on a kind of a smaller level by picking individual uh, grape berries. And uh, same sort of thing, you wanna pick a random assortment of different areas, uh, underripe, riper, and uh, make sure that you're not getting just the best or just the worst. So I went ahead and got a little bit of juice here uh, settled and uh, we have cleaned our prism uh, with the DI water. So let's go ahead and drop just a little tiny bit into the uh, well here and uh, let's see what we we have here uh, so we're going to press read and we're going to get a read of uh, 20.1 now um, Bricks levels are about 55% of what the actual finished wine is going to be. So if we go 20.1 times 0.55, uh, we're at about 11% uh, alcohol uh, if we were to pick at this particular point in time. Now, uh, one of the things that you definitely want to do is you want to make sure that you take uh, several different readings because uh, they can vary uh, from reading to reading. So go ahead and use your DI water. Uh, and uh, get some nice clean absorbent cloths or paper towels or napkins or whatever you are happen, happen, happening to use. And let's go ahead and get another reading. So let's go ahead and, uh, 
And again, do some uh, dropping very gently. It's not a very deep well, so you don't need a whole lot. There we go. And press read. And uh, we are at 19.3. So a little bit different. Um, and that's kind of to be expected. So typically what you want to do is get an average of a couple different readings uh, to give you an idea of, uh, of when you want to uh, get your picks set up. Because in today's world, it's really difficult to find the labor to pick. Usually you're working with a farming company. And usually those folks are, are well booked up, just like airlines. So you kind of need to make sure that you um, allow yourself enough time to make that kind of approximation of where you think your grapes are going to be optimally ready. So let's go ahead and do one last third reading and uh, just to kind of see if we're in the ballpark here. So uh, that third reading, we're going to go read and um, we are at 20. So we're kind of right in the range. So again, 20 times 0.55, so about 11%. Um, as we know, we want to really be for Pinot Noir probably in, uh, in the 12 range. Uh, once we get into 13 and 14, uh, you certainly uh, are getting uh, into uh, a situation where you really need to do um, a, a lot more uh, diligence in your winemaking process. Um, the higher the alcohol, um, the clumsier wine tends to get. So uh, we uh, all know that traditionally Burgundy uh, Pinots tend to be lower alcohol. Uh, for example, Santa Lucia Highlands uh, t uh, in Monterey region tend to have higher alcohol. All winemakers have their own sort of decision about what they want to do uh, with uh, their, uh, their pick, uh, depending on the wine style and a lot of other factors. But using a, a refractometer is certainly a, a good tool uh, to help you uh, as a winemaker make those uh, big decisions. So hopefully this has been fun and informative. Again, this is Bacchus Bruce, and uh, thanks for stopping by. And and um, we'll see you in the tasting room. Enjoy the rest of your day.